Hey there YouTube. So I've always had kind of a hard time answering questions that require more kind of a research or just longer explanations, more work, stuff I can't answer in 10 minutes. So I um, have been getting some questions and I always like want to answer them but it's always like, ah, uh, when do I have time for this? So I've decided that maybe I will try to have a regular um, kind of mailbag thing where these answers take a bit more effort than just saying oh yeah you can find blah 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 at blah 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 and such and such. Um, so if you have your own answers to these questions feel free to make video responses. These are just from my YouTube or my Tumblr or uh, email sent directly to me. Um, if I keep doing these videos, I probably call these like Rachel Rambles or something because I have a hard time answering questions with brevity. So my first question is from Mad Tracks off YouTube. It says, Hello Rachel, can you please tell me when programming a video game, do you have to know a lot of math and physics? Is it very difficult? Or just some things you learn at high school? I mean to create games like Tomb Raider and Call of Duty. Hope you can help me out on this, thank you very much. Um, so, okay, I'm going to break this answer into three parts, because I have three kind of main points I want to make. Um, it would be kind of the math you need for different things, uh, math in professional engines, and then programming tools, because you don't have to be writing engines to be in the industry or just to make games. So for the first part, I didn't go to high school, so I assume that high school goes up to Calc 1, but I don't know how much more than that. Um, like, so how, Calc 1 and Trig, right? So for 2D game programming, you don't need as much math as what you do with 3D. Um, really, you can get away with kind of like a basic understanding of your elementary and intermediate algebra. It's good to know about coordinate planes, um, a good eye for manipulating numbers, being able to solve equations and things. Uh, trig might also be useful if you want to not just be bound to the x, y axis, but you want to, like, say, aim at any direction for, to shoot, like a stick shooter game. Um, that would require your trig, mainly just sine and cosine, not like a really complex understanding of it, but kind of your basic trigonometry. Um, when you're writing an engine for a 3D game, there's going to be a lot more math involved. Uh, this includes trigonometry, calc 3, and linear algebra. And if you're doing heavy graphics programming, the ability to figure out problems and understand algorithms is key, because other people have already done this stuff before. You might be looking for solutions that they've come up with, and they're going the best, the most clear way to convey this sort of thing is usually through math. Um, so, to the second point, math you would see if you were writing something like Call of Duty or the new Tomb Raider, there would be a lot of technology in that engine. You know, you go into the graphical options and you have like atmospheric scattering and anti-isotropic filtering and all of that. Um, so if you grab a book like GPU Gems, and this is like graphics programming, you will see like in here we have um, filtering, Perlin, uh, implementing improved Perlin noise, Octree textures on the GPU, illumination rendering, um, just a lot of different things. Hey, this looks familiar from linear algebra. And when you flip through it, you'll see, you know, how do you do this? Well, there's going to be kind of mathematical examples. You'll see the use of vectors. Here you have a summation of, and I haven't done really any of this sort of stuff. I've basically just rendered really, really basic geometry with textures and lighting, and I kind of let everything else take care of that, but when you are getting into shaders or techniques for optimization or other things, uh, there's going to be a lot of high-level math there. So, but this is just one part of the game programming experience. There'd be engine programming, graphics programming, there'd be gameplay programming, um, for a lot of modern day games, you'll see them using an engine already. You see this in the beginning of a lot of games, they're built using Unreal technology. Um, and then that engine handles a lot of the stuff already, and you do gameplay programming, which could be scripting or adding on to it, but 
usually, I mean, you're not going to be writing engines professionally in the game development industry until you have a lot of experience, and that's not going to be something you're going to be able to do right out of high school. Now, now additionally, as a hobbyist, you're not going to be making games like Call of Duty or Tomb Raider by yourself, not the one that came out a bit ago. I can see someone making like Tomb Raider, like the old PS1 versions with the like, Unity or uh, like it's been a long time since I've seen Tomb Raider, so I, it doesn't seem like it'd be out of the reach of some talented independent developers, but probably alone with your high school math, you're probably not going to be able to make that sort of thing. Um, now, these AAA games, of course, everyone says this, it takes a lot of time, a lot of money, and a big team. A huge budget, it takes money. Um, and the industry is going to be wanting to hire people with degrees or equivalent experience, which means that they were pro like maybe they got into the industry a bit ago and they've been working for years and years and they've gotten the experience just through working, work experience. Now if you're going to be working on your own, that doesn't mean you're going to be writing your own engine from scratch to, and you're not going to be competing with Call of Duty. Um, but you could use something like UDK or Unity to kind of help you along with that if you wanted to make a 3D game and not put all of that work into it because it does take a lot of time and learning to be able to write a 3D engine. Um, but I personally don't know what Unity and UDK require as far as math knowledge because I haven't used them very much. Now, more math isn't going to hurt at all. Uh, the more math you have is going to help even if you're just making 2D games and you only need like your trig and some algebra. Um, you won't be, you know, you won't be using integration by parts in your game engine, but do, the more math you do, the better you get at problem solving. Uh, you're able to create your own equations based on here's my problem domain, here's what I need to find, here's the data I have, and just kind of put that all together. And that's a, one of the big problems with, like, the hardest part about math anyway. It's not really, like, the computation all the time. Sometimes you can get computers to do that, but... Um, it's figuring out what you need to figure out. Um, for my computer science degree, I've had, you know, elementary algebra and intermediate algebra, and then I had trig, college algebra, calculus 1 through 3, differential equations, probability, statistics, discrete math 1 and 2, numerical analysis, engineering physics 1 and 2, which I didn't bring up yet, uh, physics. Um, and I'm currently in linear algebra, though that for some reason wasn't required for my CS degree. The classes I've had in math, and I feel pretty comfortable with being able to do what I need to do, or be able to research what I need to research and understand things on my own. Um, now when it comes to physics, this is another thing where bits and pieces are going to be useful, but you're not going to need all of physics 1 and 2 for game programming. Newtonian physics is good for understanding how velocity and acceleration work, and that requires integration and deriv uh, derivation, so that'd be Calc 1. Um, if you wanted to do graphical effects, it might help to have more experience in this type of physics or that type of physics. So yeah, like having more math isn't going to hurt you. It's going to help you in the long run. Um, and if your ultimate goal is to make stuff like Call of Duty or the new Tomb Raider, then you probably should be pursuing that sort of path. It really depends on what your goals are. If you just want to like design worlds, then you don't really need that. If you just want to like script events in a game, you don't really need that. Um, but if you want to be an engine developer, you kind of need to know a lot about math, a lot about computer science, um, a bit about how computers work at the low level so you can drop books all the time. So you can understand how things need to be done from the system's point of view. We, meh, eh, I don't really know what else to say beyond that. Just 